Hey everyone, and welcome to the tutorial series for the NPC Manager system. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the bonus crowd tools that come with the system. Specifically, we'll be taking a look at the static NPCs and the spline crowd. So let's go ahead and jump into Unreal. And this is exactly where we left off from the previous video. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, let's just close some of these things here. And for our NPC here, we won't really need him, so we can go ahead and disable him. So click on uh, NPC controller and simply uh, disable uh, the NPC by unchecking here. <clears throat> we also uh, want to uh, disable the uh, blueprint here. We can simply click on uh, deselect active. And now if we click on simulate, nothing happens. All right. Uh, we won't be dealing with the NPCs, we'll be dealing with the crowd tools. So let's just pick an area of our map here in this corner. And if we go to the top folder uh, under Blueprints, now we go under Characters, NPC. And here is our current uh, tutorial NPC, but we actually want to go under the Crowds folder here. And we have Spline Crowd and Static Crowd. And let's just do Static Crowd for now. And this is very, very simple. All we need to do is just drag one of these guys here. We'll rotate them. There we go. And if we click on simulate, that's it. He's uh, simply uh, playing different animations on a loop. And let's make sure that we are not um, changing the simulation rate. So I did this for a previous video to make things go a little faster but you have that option on the NPC manager. You can use time dilation. And, and in this case, I was using two times. That means that the simulation is going at 200% speed. We want to disable that. And now if I click on simulate, notice that he's simply playing uh, a random animation. Um, and again, like I can mention on one of the previous videos, all of the animations here are for placeholder purposes. I did them myself on Blender, so you can see that they're not the best animations around. Uh, so feel free to change these animations with proper animations. So click on the NPC here. And if you click on the component, you'll notice that it's super simple. We just have whether the NPC is active or not. An animations list. And again, you have an intro, a loop, and an outro. In this case, we have idle idle too and we have a cheer animation basically you can add as many animations as you want here it'll just play uh, pick a random animation play it pick another random animation and play it and this is meant to be just a static npc there's also the force mesh uh, uh, lod here and this is again the level of detail so if you have a crowd that is very far away you can force the lod to be something else permanently that way it saves you a little bit more performance so if i can if i select lod5 for example and click on simulate notice that our npc is looking a little bit more uh, low poly um, so this is just an option if you don't select it if you leave it at zero the unreal engine will automatically lod the npcs by choice uh, by the distance or sorry not by the distance by the size in the screen but if you already know for a fact that this is going to be viewed from very far away just to create a crowd, you can go ahead and make the LOD whatever you want. And in this case, LOD 7, which is the lowest LOD that I have here, you can see how bad it looks. But again, you, you, can, you can feel free to, uh, to force the LOD to whatever you feel is best. That's pretty much it as far as the, uh, the static NPCs. Let's go ahead and remove him. And now for the more interesting cl uh, spline crowd um, blueprint, this is all of the all of the NPCs that are walking around and following a path. So we go to the spline crowd, and you can see that there's a blueprint here, BP spline crowd. I'm just gonna drop this guy here, and we will uh, turn him around. And the same thing, we'll select the actual spline point here. And we can just uh, move him. And if you press and hold Alt while you drag, you um, duplicate the spline point. So I'm 
holding alt and dragging leave uh, holding alt and dragging holding alt and dragging and that way we can now change the path uh, to something like this that can literally be whatever it is and then if I simply click on simulate you can see that automatically the bunch of NPCs spawn they're following the path kind of hard to see because the spline disappears when you're simulating but you can see that they're going around and automatically when they get to the end of the spline they get teleported back to the beginning and that's important to know because we don't want to spawn new NPCs constantly we spawn the amount of NPCs that we want in this case by default is 20 and then we continue continually teleport them uh, because uh, spawning is a very expensive operation we want to uh, do that uh, we could have a closed loop uh, and in this case um, we don't have an example so let's just do a closed loop here actually let's just drag a new one here just to show the closed loop oops and we'll do this and again just to make things very simple we get the the last spline point as close to the first one as possible and click on close loop and you'll see that automatically we get this uh, uh, section here and it's basically a loop and in that case let's make sure that we only have five NPCs that spawn here and if we click on simulate notice that we have these five uh, NPCs and they're not being teleported they're going around on a loop so those are the two different modes the normal one which teleports them and if and the loop one which it does not so you have those options for your game um, in the demo scene that i'm using i'm using this mode here when i'm teleporting simply because of the design of the level but if you wanted to you could make an, a nice little loop and have your npc simply follow that path very very simple another thing to keep in mind is that you can see that there's a mode here single player and multiplayer um, because i am uh, having this uh, kit also work on a dedicated server certain functions are not available on a dedicated server so i had to go and change the way i'm doing things in multiplayer so if you select multiplayer here and click uh, simulate you won't really notice the difference but there is a difference these npcs are now using the nav mesh uh, to navigate as opposed to using the um, input node uh, so I haven't really found them to be more expensive but I think in theory they should be a little bit more expensive uh, but regardless just keep that in mind if you're doing a single player game leave it like that but if you're doing any kind of multiplayer change it here otherwise you'll find that it won't work uh, and lastly um, you can you can choose to use the trigger or not so if you use the trigger the npcs will only spawn when they hit this trigger so for you to do that you can physically select the trigger here and we're going to go ahead and scale it so we can move it and scale it whoops actually let's just do it here it's easier uh, scale it to like 50 and here to like a hundred hundred and fifty oops nope there you go notice that you can make this trigger whatever you want but now if we hit on simulate nothing happens because we need the player to actually hit the trigger so now when we hit the trigger now you see that the NPCs spawn and they go around and as soon as we leave the trigger notice that we're doing a trace looking for players no players are there uh, and it uh, despawns them and then you can go back here and do that so obviously this is preferable for performance uh, reasons uh, you you will want them to only spawn when there's any player around otherwise there's no need for all of these NPCs to do that. This is the way I have it set up on the showcase level, but again, it depends on your use case. If you have a, a, a Archivist simulation and you don't even have a player, you just wanna fly around the level, obviously deselect this 
and um and yeah that should be it also you have a list of npc classes this can be just regular pawns these are basically these four very vari variations here and the only difference here is that i changed the color that way it looks like there's more uh different types of npcs some of the settings here basically tell the npcs how close to the actual spline they need to be this is an offset in the negative and the in the positive direction uh, so you can have the npcs be very very close to the spline or you can spread them out more so if you have more npcs make sure that you increase those numbers so they can so they're not bumping into each other right um let's just give you an example like minus a thousand to a thousand and you click on oh you can click on simulate here you can see that they're way more spread out they're still following this blind but they're way more spread out uh so you can control that and and we can make this a lot more 100 npcs here you can see that now we have a massive crowd uh, it doesn't really look that much like they're following the spline because, of course, they're so spread out and some of them are just straight up falling. <laughs> uh, but you do have that control. Uh, you do have that control over there of how spread out you want them to be. All right. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Um, you also can force the LOD just like the static NPCs. If this is going to be a very a far, far off crowd, you can force the LOD here. You can add an NPC uh, speed multiplier. So whatever the speed the NPC has, in this case by default, it'll pick a random speed between 80% and 150% of that speed. And this teleport distance is basically how close to, this, uh, to the last blind point do you want the NPC to be before it teleports back so if you notice that the npcs are getting stuck somehow you can increase this value here play around with it until you see that the, all of the npcs are uh, actually going back uh, and teleporting back uh, to the right place so those are the values there um, and oh sorry sorry guys one last thing uh, let's just delete this and these are the in the inner section uh that we see here so let's just drag a new one and this is going to be very quick but i just i do want to show this really quickly i'm going to have a crowd go this way and we'll drag this guy here and we'll drag another one that is going the opposite way that is simply going like this So if we click simulate, notice that we have two different crowds going like this. We can actually uh, force the NPCs to sometimes change directions to another uh, spline. And that's by using the intersection blueprint. You can see there. So you can drag this guy here right on top of the intersection of these two uh, spline points. And you can come here and you need to add the paths. So we'll add the first one here and the second one here. And every time an NPC gets here, it'll have a 50% chance to switch to another path. So you can change, you can play with the values here. 50% uh, is what I arrived as, as default, but you can make it whatever percent. Uh, and then when you hit simulate, You'll see what happens. And let's make this a lot smaller so it's easier to see. Just five NPCs on each. And when you click on play, you'll notice that some NPCs, notice here, some NPCs decide to switch like this guy and this guy. And there's a 50% a chance that they'll switch. There you go. So that is pretty much it, guys. Uh, very simple, but that was a request. See that this guy switched to this one here and this guy switched. So if you wanted to do something a little bit more complex, uh, you can have the NPC switch, uh, different paths. You could have a path, one of these paths per street in your city, and you could have crowds walking around and sometimes they decide to, uh, to switch. That is pretty much it. 
All right, guys. Thank you so much. Remember, these are bonus crowd tools. Hopefully, uh, uh, they're useful for your game. Uh, remember, we looked at the static uh, crowd um, and the spline crowd. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me directly here or join our Discord. There's going to be a link in the description. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks.